live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone, live here in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of VMworld 2017. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE, with my partner Dave Vellante, co-host. Eighth year of CUBE coverage at VMworld. Since 2010, we've been documenting the, the evolution of VMware. Next guest is Bhaskar Iyer, who's the CIO of VMware and Dell. Big time CIO, been in the field, been in working on a real practitioner, now at the company, going to the cloud. Hybrid cloud, that's great to see you. <laughs> great to see you again. <laughs> so, Pat Gelsinger's keynote, really relevant. I just want to say, you know, our conversation last year, and even the year before, you're like Nostradamus, you're like predicting the future. We talked about IOT. That's right. And now IOT Edge. Are you helping messaging and with VMware? <laughs> I mean, are you? Well, um, see, uh, my background, having worked in Honeywell and, and so on, is that. And I saw IOT as a big opportunity. So it was, it was easy for me to see that it was going to be big, but I didn't see, think it was this big. But I'm messaging more with CIOs, more than I, uh, VMware, to say, you're going to miss this wave. It looks like a lot of CIOs are so focused on you know, business IT, they're missing IOT. So my message is, this here's a great opportunity for you to get ahead of, rather, don't, don't miss it. I want to talk about waves, because yeah. uh, you know, last year, we really made, and then you look at what Pat Gelsinger did last year, we were commenting that he gave the speech of his life, was that two years ago, I can't remember. <laughs> he really was like, it was under a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. The stock was like at 42, very low, and uh, is he the right guy? He made some bets, and Pat's a wave guy, and, and he's all about the waves. And as he said, you're not out in front of that next wave, you become driftwood. So I got to ask you the question, by the way, he's got the great wave slide here. From a customer perspective, they're watching here, Gelsinger lay out a great vision, the stock price is booming, strategy's clear, Andy Jaffe from Amazon comes on stage. There is clarity in this direction yeah. and the waves that you're on. Yeah. Now customers have to make the choice of bets. They're looking at the wave and saying, what are my bets? The question I have for you is, what bets are customers making now as a CIO? And, and what should they look at? What, in what sequence? And how do they attack those bets? And which are the right bets? So I think the cloud is a big bet. I mean, we don't want, people don't want to talk about cloud because they think we've been talking about it for a long time. But enterprise hasn't really gone much in that journey, right? There's still a lot of data centers running virtual machines, which is great, but you really don't have a private cloud set up. And then this burst capacity to go to public cloud and so on, very few people have examples of that. There are some people, but not the large majority. What happens in IT is, when you, you get spooked when you see a public cloud and a private cloud and you're not sure which way it's going, so the nice thing about this announcement is, that thing is mystery is out, right? So you want to go to public cloud, here's a way to get. You want to stay in your private cloud, here's a way you can stay in your private cloud. Plus, moving legacy applications, people never talk about legacy. They always talk about, you know, if you and I are building a new company to go to a public cloud, do a cloud ready, pretty easy. But I have some old applications, even in a technology company, how do I move it? So I think that, as a customer, when I looked at Pat's message, I said, that makes sense to me. I can choose to run it on my data center, go to a private cloud, and go into Amazon. Yeah. I got to ask you, I know Dave wants to jump in because he's got some good private cloud data to talk about, yeah. I mean, about true private cloud data. You mentioned uh, how hard it is to move legacy apps. Yeah. Can you give some illustration and some color to how hard it is? Because a lot of people in the press, analysts, even startups, oh, it's so easy, I want to just win the enterprise. I know. Uh, if it's a clean sheet of paper, I get that, but there's a lot of important things. How hard is it? to really deal with this legacy data center environment in the path to hybrid and public cloud? Well, let's, there's still, you know, people think of, if you think of an ERP, people have four or five ERPs still. You know, you were just imagining everybody's just on one nice SAP or one nice Oracle. There are several instances. And the reason you haven't migrated to one is not because we don't know how to do it. There's an ROI, you know, do I invest the money? Do I do this right now? Do I get the people? It's another $400 million to invest on an ERP risky. system. Very risky. So you got a lot of these. You got PeopleSoft, which is different versions. You got HR systems, sales systems. So that's what in, in a lot of data centers, believe it or not. How do you move it? And then when you go to a, the public cloud, the guy says, are you cloud ready? And no, you're not. You got a legacy system. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just don't want to run this. You want to run it in the most efficient way with a, in a container. So I think people don't see that. The other thing they don't see is at scale, it is expensive sometimes to go to public cloud. If you and I starting a company, 
we won't build a data center, we can probably go to the public cloud. But if I have scale, I already have data centers, I'm running it at scale, and not everything is unpredictable. A lot of business IT is very predictable workloads, right? I know what I need to buy next year, generally. So what, am, what burst capacity am I looking for? Not everybody requires that. So that's another reason. Security, both ways, right? People say that public cloud is more secure, but there's a lot of regulatory bodies who want you to show. And it's a lot of work that I have to certify to show that. So what, what CIO is trying to do is to say, we'll try to go cloud where we can, but there's still 80%, 90% of your stuff running in your data center. Help me bridge that. Well, we talk about cloud, private cloud. We talk about, we, we coined this term true private cloud. Yeah. And the basic concept is bring the cloud model to your data. Right. Don't, and we, we tell our CIOs, look, don't try to form your business and fit it into the cloud. Fit the cloud into your business, wherever that data lives. Yeah. Is that a reasonable way to look at it? And is that what you're doing with your business? Yeah, so I define it even more simply. I kind of say, if you have a lot of people running your data center, you don't have a cloud. I mean, the whole point of cloud is automation. The reason yeah. public clouds are cheaper or better is because it's highly automated. Mm -hmm. So that's the trick, is if you have people in a data center, then it's not a cloud. So get your data center modernized. I define it as private cloud. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it automation. But get it automated. Then the scale comes up and your cost comes down. But then when you want burst capacity, you don't have to build servers for that. You can go to the public cloud for a burst capacity. But the, the big point for me is, people have to sit down and figure out a strategy. A few years ago, people said, don't go into, into infrastructure, just outsource it. So we all outsourced it, and that became a mess. Sooner or later, you got to figure out what you need to do. You can't just outsource it, put it in the cloud, not think about it, make it go away. So you see a lot of CIOs coming back and saying, yeah, I, I want that, but I also want to fix this. How do I automate? I want to get the cost out. That's, that's how I define a, a a private cloud is don't have too much cost. So, are you running a private cloud or? So, I, not only am I, I'm, so I, I should be modest, but I'm not going to be. I think we run one of the best private clouds there is for VMware. Everything that you see in VMware, the hands-on lab you see there, is all running on our private cloud at scale. We're extending that cloud to now Dell Technologies. Right, we're taking the same model, cut and paste it. Imagine how much leverage you get from EMC and Dell data centers when you extend the private cloud. So for a company like us, it's a, it's, a, it's a sure bet. So what does it look like underneath? I mean, you got vSANs running, you know? Yeah, you have, you have, critical you have apps, vSAN, NSX, everything we talk about. Have you thrown out all your arrays? I mean, what? what? No, you, you don't throw out all our arrays, but vSAN is, I mean, what you see in the market is happening in my data center as well, right? So vSAN is, there's more and more vSAN nodes now, but you have mission critical SAP and Oracle stuff that I don't want to necessarily save dollars, I want something that is mission critical, proven, ready, certified, et cetera. So the other things don't go away, but your storage is growing. As the storage grows, you see a lot more of the vSAN growing with that. I say I have a lot of vSAN, a lot of NSX. You know how many clusters you have now? And probably a zillion, I mean, pretty yeah, large it's number. It's a large number of clusters, and it's just, uh, the reason I don't know is every month it's just uh, <laughs> amazingly growing. Last year when we talked about it, when, when you asked the question about vSAN, there was only a few left in my data center. So I, I deliberately didn't talk a whole lot about it. Now it's taking on like fire, yeah. right? It's reflective, it's just, uh, you know, as the reliability increases and the, the cost value proposition is there, it's taking off. You're talking tens of thousands tens of, of VMs, thousands. Yeah, VMs yeah. and petabytes of data, right? Or, yeah, right? multiple petabytes of data. <laughs> Over 60% of that is growing, in, the, the growth mar is really large in the vSAN as well. I got to ask you, the journey to, for the CIO and the CXOs out there, because now there's multiple CXOs, you got chief security officer, some say chief economics officer because of cryptocurrency, blockchains coming around the corner, right. which we haven't get to. We got to talk about blockchain, because next year it's going to be on the wave slides. Right. Because uh, decentralization is all about blockchain. Yeah. There should be a computing that's already there. They all want to get there, they don't want to screw up. I need the headroom, but I don't want to make any moves too early to get over my skis or foreclose an opportunity. Yeah. So what's the path? Are they getting their house in order with the private cloud? Is that the stepping stone to hybrid cloud? What are some of the day in the life of the CIO right now? Because what we're seeing from the Wikibon data is true private cloud on premise is growing really well. It's not declining in any capacity. That's where the action is right now, more than hybrid cloud. Yeah. What's the CIO doing? Is that the trend that you see? What's going on in their world? Well, there are three or four things going. There are, when there are SaaS applications, that compute is going with a SaaS vendor. So that is happening a bit. But the pri I see the private cloud growing, right? I, you know, yeah. I, I don't see it disappearing anywhere. And I talk to my other CIOs and say, should I be saying this or 
is it true or not? And everybody's saying, yeah, it is growing. Yeah. And so is SaaS and so is public cloud. But, you know, a big majority of uh, VMware computers run on a private cloud. And so I see it grow. So what the CIOs would look for is I want to run my private cloud efficiently, but I also want to, I don't want to have these large um, boxes for burst capacity. Say I have a Thanksgiving sale or a Christmas sale, I don't want to have boxes sitting doing nothing. Can I take advantage of the public cloud for that? And then cloud ready, when I want to do some experiments or the newer development, let me try it on the public cloud. My feeling is, my stats tells me, and you guys are the experts on it, is if you have a scale, at some scale, if you're on a good private cloud, the costs are going to be better for you. Yeah. That's what my experience tells because me. Because some of the things are predictable, like, hey, retail season's here, I can yeah. go burst in the cloud for that, right. and then everything else kind of overflow to the cloud, the, auto scaling. The key is labor. Yeah, it right. is. You could take labor out. So I just want to share some numbers with sure. you guys. We saw the, what we call the true private cloud, you're calling private cloud, yeah. growing at 33% CAGR versus the infrastructure as a service for the public cloud growing at 15%. Wow. And, over, and in the it's a 10 year forecast, we have true private cloud at 230 billion, the infrastructure as a service public cloud at 150 billion. So the biggest market, growing the fastest, to your point, SaaS is bigger than both. Right. And that's growing really, really fast. But it's the IT labor piece, $150 billion coming out of labor, yeah. going into vendor R&D and shifting to analytics and value. digital transformations, right. value producing things. I so think that is the transformation. The transformation is labor is going out, automation is coming in. So I can put that on DevOps or the business kind of uh, transformation projects. That's good to see. That's what intuitively as a practitioner I say, but it's good to have the data. I'm going to go yeah. read it up and see. That, that yeah. makes well, a lot so of sense Pat Kelsinger actually made a quote in the keynote. I thought this is why I was honed in on that, is that he actually said shifting to value activities. That's analytics. Right. You call it vendor R&D, which is basically a way to fund some of the new projects sure. where the hybrid and public are, are being operationalized to be predictable to right. some level. Sure, exactly. Um, but I totally see that the hybrid cloud is stalled, in my opinion. You guys can comment on it. But based on my anecdotal hundreds of shows we go to, it's hyped up beyond all recognition. Yeah. But it's happening after private cloud is set up because the operating model of the cloud's got to get set up and it's just a lot, it's just a slog for the enterprise. Well, to your points, maybe bursting, maybe yeah, some DR, but sense. it's not a federated, set of federated apps or is it? At least I don't see it that yeah. way. I mean, so things should be simple but not simpler is what they say. Yeah, yeah, no. You got to get your house in order. I mean, you can't, I mean, I made the mistake of saying, let's just outsource it because I don't want to think about it. <laughs> this is the same thing that we are talking about. Let's just put it all on the cloud. What do you mean? I mean, there are legacy apps. You still have to run it at a good cost. You still have to know it. So I'm a little old fashioned that way to say, get your house in order and have the options open for burst and other kind well, of things. Well, digital that you transformation want to do. also has a lot of pressure on top line revenue. So now yeah. you can't just put the paint aside and not look at it, sure. put it in the corner. No, look, gotta, IoT, we talked about this you're going to have your whole business being censored. That needs a lot of latency and other kind of issues, a lot of data. You need to, you better have a good private cloud story for the IOT, right? Not everything can be put on the public cloud to make it happen. They just don't have the, the latency. I mean, there's a law of physics still. So like a car is going to be a data center, more or less, right? You need to make response in a very short time. Factories have to have responsive systems and robotics. You can't go traverse the internet go get a data from a public cloud, come back to make a decision on a robot. Okay, so, so don't uh, ignore it is all I'm saying, do everything, don't ignore it. So the future, let's talk about the future. AI is here, that's all, also hyped up beyond all recognition. But I love AI and because it's got a software aspect to it. Machine learning is super relevant. Yeah. Blockchain. Yeah. Pat Gelsinger in his keynote really addressed, I thought, a really clever way to weave this in, decentralization. Yeah. Obviously we all know what distributed computing is. Sure. Centralized databases can be hacked. Sure. Um, distribution and decentralization around blockchain right. is interesting. So, if we're putting our futuristic hats on, yeah. what does IT look like in a totally non-controllable, fully instrumented blockchain cryptocurrency market? I is there going to be IT coins? <laughs> I think like an arcade, I want some IT? <laughs> I, I think so, I mean, it's exciting. The, the only, uh, the thing with blockchain in enterprise is not the technology, it's our ability to think creatively on it. Right, we are not able to envision these kind of things yet. It'll come in a year. I think it's our, we have to sit down and think about how to take advantage of that. It's pretty exciting. And you know, we still have simple issues on, uh, you know, uh, we, I, we know we can't centralize everything. That we've tried for years and years and years, it's gone already. 
Now I want to decentralize, perhaps use technology like this to make sure I can still control what I want to control, right? So the thing with blockchain, internally when I talk to people is, don't show me a proof of concept on the technology, I get the tech. What is the use case? Yeah. So we have to use our brains, and I think in six months we will have it, we're just not there yet completely. Because that's where the disruption vector that's will it's be. That's right. That's well, right. if anyone's doing an IT coin token sale, I'm interested. <laughs> yeah, well, next year. I mean, IoT, we talked last time, it looked like vaporware, and now you have examples and everybody's doing it. I think uh, blockchain is, is definitely there. I mean, supply chain can be applied to network oh, yeah. packets, as we always say at the edge. Best, thanks for coming on theCUBE, sure, as usual, you. great <laughs> stuff. Good to see you. CUBE coverage live here in Las Vegas for VMworld 2017. We'll be right back with more coverage after this break. Thank you.